So in March of 2015, I met a 52-year-old woman who was referred for a multidisciplinary assessment. And um, she was diagnosed with breast cancer having been found at a, a screening mammogram. Breast MRI showed a 55 millimeter lesion, which is quite large in her left breast. Um, she had a family history of breast cancer in an aunt, and um, the aunt was 50 when she was diagnosed, so genetic testing was done and was negative. Um, she had lumpectomy and axillary staging, and the tumor was a high grade, grade three invasive ductal carcinoma. The hormone receptor status was positive with an estrogen receptor positive uh, and a progesterone receptor negative. And the tumor was HER2 negative with an immunohistochemistry score of one plus. Um, we also did an Oncotype DX score and it was in the high risk range at 35. So she was staged um, T3, uh, N0, um, and there were no clinical evidence of uh, metastasis and has excellent performance status, except that she just had surgery. Um, so the decision was made to give her chemotherapy and she received standard chemotherapy with adromycin cytoxan followed by Taxol. And then since the cancer had been hormone receptor positive, she was started on um, endocrine therapy with letrozole. So in April 2017, um, she had a CT scan with contrast that showed a four millimeter nodule in her left lung and biopsy was done and confirmed uh, metastatic breast cancer to the lungs, which was estrogen receptor positive and HER2 negative again. So endocrine therapy with letrozole was stopped and the next line endocrine therapy with fulvestrant was started. Um, that was continued for three months uh, when we did restaging scans to monitor for response and the uh, cancer had grown again after three months. Um, so treatment with endocrine therapy was stopped and chemotherapy with an oral agent called capecitabine was started. Um, with scans at three and six months after starting the capecitabine, um, there was partial response. Uh, but when she came back in April 2018 for scans, um, she was tired and had had uh, deep, when she breathed deeply, she had pain. So we did scans again at that point and um, we checked a CT angiogram and there was no pulmonary embolus, but the lesions in the lungs were worse and she had new liver metastasis at that point. So the oral agent was stopped um, and uh, she started IV chemotherapy with aribulin um, at a standard dose um, of 1.4 milligram per meter squared every, um, every week for two weeks in a row and then one week off. To start off with, um, when she was diagnosed, she had a fairly large tumor and it was hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative uh, and found on mammogram, which means she probably didn't do um, breast exams because it was fairly large. Um, but it, it, the risk of it coming back was high enough to where um, I may have even considered not doing an Oncotype DX because I would want to give her the benefit of treatment with a high-grade tumor that was progesterone receptor negative and have offered her things. Um, but the Oncotype DX confirmed that the risk was high. Note should be made though, in, in people who have strongly hormone receptor positive cancers that are HER2 negative now based on TaylorX data from 2018 ASCO um, and published as well, showed that the um, women who had hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative, node negative breast cancers, and an intermediate Oncotype DX recurrent score, um, and negative lymph nodes probably don't benefit enough from chemotherapy to make it worth doing. And that was a, a practice changing um, uh, presentation at ASCO. Um, the, the fact that her cancer actually returned within a few years is concerning, um, which kind of goes along with having a high risk oncotype score that shows up later. And um, she did not respond to initial um, endocrine therapy for metastatic disease. So that puts you in a situation where you're taking a, a patient who has a hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative cancer um, that is hormone receptor positive but not responsive to endocrine therapy. Um, so she was had she was um, started on chemotherapy to manage that. To start off with, um, when she was diagnosed, she had a fairly large tumor, and it was hormone receptor positive and HER2 negative, uh, and found on mammogram, which means she probably didn't do um, breast exams because it was fairly large. Um, but it, it, the risk of it coming back was high enough to where. Um, 
I may have even considered not doing an Oncotype DX because I would want to give her the benefit of treatment with a high-grade tumor that was progesterone receptor negative and have offered her things. Um, but the Oncotype DX confirmed that the risk was high. Notes should be made, though, in, in people who have strongly hormone receptor positive cancers that are HER2 negative now based on TaylorX data from 2018 ASCO um, and published as well, showed that the um, women who had hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative, node negative breast cancers, and an intermediate Oncotype DX recurrent score um, and negative lymph nodes probably don't benefit enough from chemotherapy to make it worth doing. And that was a, a practice changing um, uh, presentation at ASCO. Um, the fact that her cancer actually returned within a few years is concerning, um, which kind of goes along with having a high risk oncotype score that shows up later. And um, she did not respond to initial um, endocrine therapy for metastatic disease. So that puts you in a situation where you're taking a patient who has a hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative cancer um, that is hormone receptor positive but not responsive to endocrine therapy. Um, so she was, had, she was um, started on chemotherapy to manage that 